So our platform was specifically built for business users in mind, right? So um, not just in terms of IT or traditional users who can also use our system, but more so the marketing managers or the product managers who can on a daily basis go into our platform, perform the day-to-day -day activities, and then be able to log out at the end of the day, knowing that they've achieved an enrichment campaign or that they've pushed out additional products to support their go-to-market strategy. Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write For Me, where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. This is Max Pittman from Write For Me, and you're listening to another episode of the Business Ninjas podcast where we meet the experts who are making things happen and scaling their businesses. And today we're talking about ContentServe with Mr. Alex Severell, who is the Managing Director for the U.S. at ContentServe. Alex, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, likewise, Max. Thanks. Very happy to be here. Yeah, you bet. Um, so ContentServe, uh, it's in the SaaS tech space for sure. And uh, the company's been around for about 20 years. So I'm definitely excited to dive into uh, what's going on at ContentServe. But before we jump into the organization itself, um, our business ninjas community is built of entrepreneurs, uh, executives, and sales and marketing leaders like yourself. And you know, as the managing director there at ContentServe, you know, tell the business ninjas community a little bit about yourself, uh, your role, maybe some of the things you're focused on as well. Sure. Um, so originally, I was actually born in Chicago. I then later on moved to Europe, and I think that also reflects my role today, which is split between Europe to the U.S. Uh, originally, I joined ContentServe roughly five years ago. Um, I started off as an inside sales rep, interestingly making cold calls and emails outbound and inbound. And my role then transitioned to focus on the U.S. specifically as a core market. What are my responsibilities today? That includes primarily looking after our go-to market strategy. So in terms of marketing, sales, customer success, and operations. Uh, maybe a little bit more around content serve itself as a company. Um, as you rightly said, we've been in the market for roughly 20 years. We operate across three main uh, regions, that's US, Europe, and JPAC. We have around 280 customers, which are based both in the B2B and B2C segments. Very cool, I love it. Yeah, it's it's great to hear kind of how you've, man, quickly grown within the organization from uh, being doing cold calls to now managing the the US go-to-market team, which is, which is really exciting and uh, um, super cool. Like you've been able to do that within the organization. and. You know, so with that being said, though, you know, being on the sales side, you probably had to practice your your pitch a lot um, and and getting people into opportunities, right? So to put you on the spot just a little bit, I know I've imagined myself being on Shark Tank, you know, pitching an idea or maybe even you know being the shark myself. Uh, so I'd love it if you can kind of give me what you know content serves elevator pitches. What what problem does content serve solve? Sure. So I think in one sentence we solved the problem of Excel files or managing multiple Excel files. Uh, what our solution does within three steps is the ability to onboard data from a variety of different sources. Um, here we can think around ERP, CRM, data pools, data lakes. We can manage and enrich that data in terms of adding in workflows, images, translations, making sure that we have the right characteristics, dimensions of products. And then we offboard that data to support various different channels, websites, mobile apps, catalogs, and also print catalogs for brochures, price lists, and things like that. So I imagine, you know, in the US, EU, and um, Japan, Asia Pacific, um, there's a pretty wide scope of verticals that you guys work with and considering uh, pretty much everyone uses Sheets yeah. or in uh, Excel, right? So like, yeah. is there, are there specific verticals that you guys focus in on or is it pretty broad? Sure. I mean, that's a good question. One of the prerequisites that I would say is that a company or a business has to be product centric or oriented, right? So they have to have some kind of physical product offering. That's number one. Number two, I would say that primarily our focus is on B2B segments, specifically within manufacturing. Um, having said that, we do also operate sort of on the peripherals in terms of fashion, lifestyle, electronics, distribution, and specialized retail as well. Gotcha. So within you know, these product-based companies, again, B2B, um, who are the types of like roles that 
you know, are the best fit for your team to talk to? Is it, you know, product teams? Is it, um, you know, is it sales teams? Is it, you know, owners, executives? Like, are there specific roles that kind of stand out for like the target audience? Yeah. Um, Traditionally, my answer would be a little bit different. So if we would go back a few years, it would be different because I think we were selling mainly to the IT departments within companies. So think of IT managers, maybe directors of IT and CIOs. Recently, I think there's been more of a shift towards customer facing teams. So here, um, marketing, sales, maybe product managers as well, who really need to work and use their product data within their everyday roles, right? So if we're thinking around marketing, they being able to use product content for their campaigns, sales, being able to print out your digital catalogs, brochures, whenever you're going into a customer meeting, product managers, being able to come up with the right content and assets to supply into, uh, let's say, an email cadence or to share within internally within your company. So I think the use cases have shifted. Um, and that answers part of my question. Um, and in terms of additional departments that I would outline, probably e-commerce, digital, and data management as well would definitely be the, the departments that we would want to get in touch with. Gotcha. And I've heard this term get thrown around a little bit, and you kind of can kind of guide me on this, but it's product information management. Is yes. Would you say that is like your core focus? Um, and, you know, I'd love to kind of understand, like, if, if this is something that falls in line with what you guys are trying to solve for. Yes. Yeah. So I know another acronym, Ryan. Um, um, with Pim, I think it encompasses a few things, right? Um, so here, I wouldn't only say that we're a Pim provider, but more a data management solution. Um, this would encompass on the one side product information management, where if you're thinking traditionally in terms of data hierarchy or data model classifications, we offer workflows, we offer asset management. But on the other side, we also do digital asset management, which means taking care of our company's assets, whether that's videos, which text files, pictures, JPEGs, in addition to the catalogs that we mentioned earlier. So I think data management would, encom- would encompass those two main um, solutions or areas for us here at Content Serve. Yeah. Well, it from the outside looking in, it does se- like sound like you know you guys do a lot, right? Um, you've already kind of covered a lot from you know using mentioned data models, digital asset management, um, you know, working with product teams, sales teams, marketing teams, email teams, right? So there's a lot that Content Serve can do. But like, what would you say is you know your secret sauce? Like, why would you know, a customer, you know, go with you guys over Mm. a competitor? Like what, what would you say is that secret sauce? Mm -hmm. Great question, Nick. I would say it has to do with our usability. So being able to have marketing product managers use our system on a daily basis. Second topic that I would touch on is integrations here and connectivity, making sure that our solution doesn't just stand alone, but can really integrate and connect with our customers' ecosystems. Um, And lastly, I would touch on the flexibility that our solution offers in terms of actually being able to data model. And what I mean here is that every customer can have a slightly different data model depending on what kind of products they operate with and having the flexibility to customize or to adapt that data model to suit their own business is really important. And I think what sets us apart on the market as well. Okay. So what would you think though, like of the companies that you're partnering with, like what kind of specific challenges do they have, right? So from a usability perspective, mm-hmm. it's there, right? You guys have the integrations that need to be there. Um, so like, can you give me an example, I guess, of maybe a challenge that you guys have solved for, you know, a customer that might be a B2B manufacturing? Sure. Um, so I think one of the main challenges was disparate or decentralized sources of data, right? So we mentioned early on the Excel files. It can be Excel files, homegrown systems, or just systems that aren't really fit for purpose to store and to enrich product data like an ERP or a PLM system. So I think it's moving away from those systems into one consolidated system to have one single source of truth. That's really, really important. Um, In addition to that, what we've seen is that typically companies that might operate across multiple markets have a demand for localization and translations, right? So we can think of North America, we might have French Canadian there, maybe Spanish to support Mexican markets and South American markets as well. Um, What will be important in that case is for our customers to be able to use content serve to translate that data, right? And to have it in um, in the appropriate language to the appropriate market in a relatively short time span. 
I think that leads me to the third point as well, is reducing the amount of time it takes for their teams to be able to actually enrich that data. Interesting. Yeah, I've heard a lot about the um, localization in, in, on websites and making sure like the, the messaging from a content perspective mirrors um, you know, that where that location is like, it's going to be different yes. US, you know, than it is going to be in Canada, right? Like, um, the spelling is going to be a little bit different on some words too. So there's a lot of, yeah, I've, I've seen like a lot more companies kind of in this space that are, they're, they're trying to optimize their websites and optimize their content for specific, uh, locations that they're trying to serve. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's also a big one when we're considering companies who'd like to expand or grow yeah. out in the future, right? So. If a company is looking, they're operating regionally for now within one market, but they would like to consider sometime, you know, maybe going into Europe or the Asia Pacific market. It's a great way to lay a solid foundation for their product offering. Sure. Well, you know, transitioning just just a second, you know, I'd love to just kind of understand, you know, you know, we this this podcast is really focused on understanding how, you know, who you guys work with, what challenges you solve, but also you know, like how you guys are growing, right? How you're scaling. So like, I'd be curious to understand, you know, what happened, you know, you were there for, you've been there for about five years. Like what, what happened and how's the business grown, you know, maybe since COVID or, or during the COVID years, like mm -hmm. what are you guys, you know, experiencing then and how has that transitioned or, or changed uh, to, into where we are today in 2023? Absolutely. Um, so originally that's an interesting fact. We started off with 12 employees back in 2000. Um, that's now grown to roughly 350 employees globally across our three markets. Uh, I think COVID for us acted as an accelerator. And similarly, that, that happened for our customers. So um, they seen that if they're not able to offer a digital or e-commerce presence with COVID, that was a necessity in some sense. Um, and for us, it gave us the necessary acceleration, one, to be able to offer our customers a platform that's available on demand via SaaS, um, so hosted in the cloud. Uh, and two, to also take traditional, let's say companies or industries that didn't really consider Omni or e-commerce as a viable channel for them and shift them over into that channel as well. And also from a company standpoint, we also had to move towards remote working, right, for all of our employees. And now I think we've taken that to heart and offer a hybrid approach for our employees. So combination of working remotely and from our office locations as well. Interesting. Yeah. It's funny, like it, COVID did that a lot with, uh, COVID changed a lot, right? Obviously, um, for a lot of people from an individual perspective, but also from like a business perspective. And, um, you know, the company that I was at during COVID, during COVID did the exact same thing. It was a really heavy growth time where, you know, people wanted to scale their team still, but they didn't want to do it in house. And so that offered us the ability to scale our own teams. Just, it sounds like you guys were able to kind of you know, see that there is, okay, a time for us to play a little offense and a little defense, you know, during COVID to, to grow and try to p penetrate new industries and have a different message to potentially take to the market than you did when you, when you originally first started. It's kind of what it sounds like. Yes, absolutely. Well, how, how is marketing kind of played into that, right? Like how, how are you guys like educating, you know, the space on, on content or right? Like, um, I heard you guys are, you know, put you're, you're on the inside team. You're probably doing some outbound email marketing, but like you guys do a whole lot, right? So you have to do a lot of like solution based selling and, and understanding pain. So I'm sure that you guys can provide those services or provide solutions to those pains, right? So how does marketing help you in educating customers on all the things that content serve does? Mm -hmm. Marketing is a vital channel for us. And I think it comes down to a few different streams um, or aspects that we should consider. Um, case studies are a really, really great foundation for taking one of our customers, understanding their challenges, what they wanted to overcome, what were some of their requirements, and translating that post content. So, so after we were able to work together with them, what were some of the achievements there? How were they able to overcome or alleviate some of the pain points that they experienced in the past? So I would say for us, being able to articulate and to create case studies based on industry verticals and based on customers within these verticals is very, very important. Um, campaigns is also very helpful. What we've recognized, let's say, from my experiences with inside sales, I think the sharper the messaging in terms of terminology, pain points, which resonates with that potential industry vertical or segment, the higher the success rate of actually being able to connect with that company. 
Um, so I think with campaigns, it's just around making sure that the message resonates really well. Um, and then lastly, I would also say that we have webinars and events. Now with COVID, obviously that shifted completely online to where a lot of our events in the past were um, online webinars were on demand as well. Now I'm happy to say that we've gone back to a hybrid approach again, where we're offering weekly and monthly webinars in addition to doing uh, in-person events. And I think the events for us are fantastic because again, we can go to larger events like B2B or ETail, which I'm sure that some of the audience here today, maybe even you, Max, will recognize um, and some more industry specific events like uh, the electronics show or the um, food industry convention as well. Yeah, so I think we're using a mixture of different channels for our marketing there. Um, yeah, and, and when we get towards the end, I definitely want to give you the opportunity to plug the webinars and events that you guys are going to be at. Um, but it, it sounds like, you know, you, the way you guys are educating the space is ensuring you're getting the right messaging in front of the right individuals, right, in, in, in those industries. So matching, you know, what you guys are identifying as far as use cases are concerned in specific industries and leveraging that information to the market to provide that you know, correlation, hey, like we've done this for businesses like yourself. These yes. are the types of things that we, we well, these types of things that we solve and, um, and and getting that type of message to the market. It sounds like that's that's one of your focus. So there's an outbound marketing focus. Um, what about from like an inbound perspective? Like how are you guys striving, you know, inbounds to the website? And, and, um, and are there other channels you guys are exploring, like channel partnerships, strategic partnerships? How are you guys to help your pipelines? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for inbound, I would really emphasize a search engine optimization has helped us significantly in the past. And um, we've really launched our brand roughly two years ago, and that has helped as well to drive additional traffic there and also awareness. Um, well, we have currently running our PPC, so pay-per-click and pay-per-lead campaigns. This contributes a little bit to driving the inbound demand that we see. I think one channel that we're exploring in the future will also be our partners. So historically with Content Serve, we've always been a partner first organization, which means that we work hand in hand together with our partners for advisory, for implementations and um, for referrals. But I think in the future, what we'd like to do more of is to strengthen our relationship with our partners across the regions and make sure that we can do joint lead generation, joint demand generation with our partners as strategic, um, as a strategic directive. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, those, I think that's a best in class approach is to obviously continue doing the outbound messaging, outbound campaigns that has to be done regardless. You're going to want to make sure you're getting, you know, decent conversion rates on those, yes. on those outbounds, right? So that's, that's one piece of it. The second piece is as well, like there has to be an inbound focus and in actually getting eyeballs to your website. So I understand that's why there's a focus on SEO, PPC, uh, and lead generation. Um, to get people to to websites, so they know who Content Serve is. You guys are being seen on Google when people are typing in him or other things online, right? That's a bogus. But a bigger focus is is as well is that establishing yourself in the marketplace with partners. Um, yeah. So uh, and having that like having that best in class approach where we have this partnership and there's almost like that, that joint um, uh, you know benefit to each other where we get to tell this story together about how we work really well together. Um, to to get those customers that might be using those specific integrations that you guys work really well with over the fence to your team as well to help drive opportunities there. So I like that's the best in class, right? You have like three different funnels and obviously referral funnels come in as well, right? Three to four different funnels of of opportunities coming in to help you guys grow at scale. Yeah, and I think it also introduces an element of diversification there, right? We're, we're not solely reliant on one channel, but rather we have... Um, different channels operating at the same time to help us drive traffic and to drive fleet generation as well. And so what's something that you want to be celebrating like a year from now, right? We're in April, 2024, mm -hmm. you know, Q1 or Q2, depending on your fiscal year ends or begins. Uh, so, you know, what's, what is something like, I guess, from like maybe even like a cultural perspective or from, you know, business perspective that the company wants to be celebrating? Mm -hmm. Great question. I think um, one of the transitions that we did in the past and we are continuing to do is the move towards SaaS first. So offering our customers SaaS cloud hosted technology. Um, for me personally, a business goal that I would like to see within the US would be all of our existing customers who are on premise or who have existing on premise installations moved over into the cloud. And I think if we could also replicate that from a global view for all of our customers, within the next year. I think that's a little bit ambitious, to be honest. 
Um, but nonetheless, I think that would be a great objective for us as, as a company. Um, in terms of a cultural view, right now, we're also planning to grow out the UST. Um, and I think that's a trend that's also shared amongst the, the European and the JPEG side. Uh, so by all means, I think for me, growing out the team to establish and to increase, let's say our marketing sales and inside sales teams would be fantastic as well. And that's something that I would like to see happen. Love it. So no, no pressure to the account management or, or customer success team uh, yeah. to get both <laughs> customers on cloud. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, as we wrap things up here, Alex, uh, is there anything else, uh, you know, you'd like to share that you think our listeners need to know about, uh, uh you know, whether that's about you or the company that we haven't covered mm -hmm. thus far? Um, so we're always happy for anyone to reach out to us, to have an initial discussion. I think you can reach us at our website, www.contentserve.com. Um, you can also reach out to me via LinkedIn and I would be happy to connect you to our sales teams. Um, if you would like to learn a little bit more about PIM, that's definitely a channel. If you would just like to know a little bit about me and my background, you can also feel free to reach out. I love it. Yeah, we'll share the contents or website or your LinkedIn in the description. Last thing, you know, uh, sure. you mentioned webinars and events that are coming up. Um, Correct. When's the next webinar? What's it called? How can people find it? And then, you know, where are you guys going to be? What events are you guys going to be at? Absolutely. So in terms of the events, we're group planning to be at B2B in Chicago online. I think that's planned for the first week of May. Um, we might also consider joining a Forrester conference, which is going to be in Dallas, Texas, the second week of June. And I think we're also planning an event for ETail in August, although that's still a little bit far out. So that's to be confirmed. Um, in terms of our next webinar, we do have the next one planned for the 28th of April, which is actually next week on Friday. I encourage anyone to join. And that is our Content Serve Insights session, where we're going to share specifically a little bit more around our onboarding portal and how suppliers can use an onboarding portal to upload their product data. Very cool. Awesome. Well, um, I'll definitely make sure that there's a way for people to sign up for that webinar in the description if people are interested in learning more. Uh, from you guys and then it's good to hear kind of where you guys are going to be kind of out about i can't wait to get back to some conferences and events myself so um uh and it's, it's that's finally finally happening again um you know my question my question thank you max for yeah statement. i appreciate your time alex um you know i appreciate you being here i really enjoyed the conversation and i feel like i've learned a lot about you uh in your growth and the organization's growth as well and what you guys have going on and uh I think um, I think uh, I appreciate you being here, and I think it was a great conversation. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how we can help you guys in, in growing, and also help you know see if uh, some individuals can can join your your webinars and uh, uh, and and meet you as well, Alex, in the process. Absolutely. So thanks once again, Max, for hosting, and thank you everyone for listening as well. Thanks. Yeah, everyone have a great rest of the day. That wraps up another episode of the Business Ninjas podcast. Cheers. Take care.